so what are we going to cover we are going to cover who is SAP what does SAP stand for we're going to understand a little bit about the products and services that SAP has as a company we're going to understand a little bit more about the SAP products and solutions and the evolution of the product we're going to understand some of the SAP data and transactions we're going to see how a typical SAP implementation look like what are the different phases of SAP implementation this is the agenda for this session so first thing is who is SAP this is a company that was started in Germany in 1972 so the bottom line on this screen is this company has been there for a while they are the market leader in what we call it as ERP applications ERP stands for enterprise resource planning and they are the market leader they have a market share of about 70 percent they have about 25,000 customers in 130 different countries they have about 30,000 employees in 50 different countries and their head office is in Germany they also have 25 different industry solutions industry solutions are modifications to the existing software that they sell based on the industry that they are selling so they have an industry solution for automotive they have an industry solution for apparel they have an industry solution for retail they have an industry solution for banking so for pretty much any industry they have an industry solution the base product doesn't change it has some additions based on the industry that they sell SAP stands for systems applications products so that's what SAP stands for people call it SAP and not SAP they also have about 1500 partners what we mean by partners so this is a software company it has other software companies as its partners to develop software they have consulting companies that sell and implement SAP software and they have a variety of different partners and there are about 1500 partners uh, for them this is just an annual report of SAP as a company all this slide tells you is the market share has been steadily increasing uh, since the late 1990s uh, it's a big it's a big market share the revenue has been pretty steady in terms of uh, um, dollars and euros uh, there are very very few companies uh, that compete with them if you look at it Oracle is the closest competition so at this snapshot SAP has got about 59 percent market share Oracle has got just 15 so the next closest competition um, is Oracle and they have got about 15 percent market share this is just the landscape of how the ERP market looks if you divide companies by large upper mid market lower mid market and smaller businesses the market segment for companies have been divided based on the size of the uh, sales if you take large companies and define them as anything over a billion dollars in annual sales 
what they need is they need global functionality more than likely they are operating in more than one country they want transactional scalability the number of transactions that they would be doing uh, is going to be constantly increasing they probably want sophisticated reporting to meet a variety of international requirements so companies like SAP sell for large companies global functionality transactional scalability and sophisticated reporting those are the reasons why companies go and implement softwares like SAP upper mid market 250 million dollars to a billion dollars companies that compete in this space include SAP there are few other products like PeopleSoft Lawson Oracle and Microsoft also has got a product that competes in this upper mid market same thing applies in the lower mid market as well Oracle um, in the last few years have been acquiring a lot of this software companies so JD Edwards PeopleSoft Bon or some of the companies that Oracle has purchased this, this slide pretty much tells you is ERP market across all different market segments SAP does compete and Oracle has been acquiring companies um, in the early 2000s big vendors dominate this ERP market ERP stands for enterprise resource planning so across an entire enterprise this software is implemented and big vendors dominated the top five owns pretty much 70 percent of the market share the ERP the size of the ERP software market alone is about 25 billion dollars globally So now we know who SAP is let us look at some of the services that SAP as a company offers so what as an S what as a company SAP offers so the SAP services are apart from selling the software they do these following things active global support so they pretty much help you uh, in any questions regarding uh, planning and implementation of the software typically the big four consulting firms uh, help you develop uh, an implementation plan uh, for the SAP implementation SAP consulting SAP as a company also offers um, consulting services uh, typically they are not engaged uh, consulting firms are engaged or in-house teams are built uh, to develop uh, SAP implementations SAP custom development in case your company needs a custom solution that is not met by standard SAP software they have capabilities in Germany and few other countries to develop a custom program to meet your needs SAP education SAP education is a service that they offer uh, to customers partners and employees uh, just education about the SAP software um, education about uh, the different things that the SAP software can do SAP hosting they also have uh, services uh, to manage SAP solutions from a remote site uh, SAP ramp up they constantly introduce new functionality uh, for the different companies so they have a team called a, a ramp up team that builds uh, new functionality uh, constantly tools and technologies and methodologies um, they, they have tools and technologies and methodologies that they uh, that they support 
this is just to give an idea of what uh, SAP services offers none of them is required to have an SAP implementation typically SAP education there are few classes that the consultants are sent or the in-house team is sent uh, to learn about SAP none of the services uh, I reiterate none of these services are required uh, when you purchase the SAP software these are some of the services that SAP as a software company offers let us look at some of the products and solution SAP has let us just take a flashback of where we were in the late 1970s the late 1970s uh, during the industrial age you pretty much had disconnected functional silos you had purchasing you had finance those two were not connected they were disconnected functional silos trying to build operational efficiencies in their own silo that's how the industrial age was in the information age people want real-time insight and response they wanted an integrated process they are constantly reinventing in this global age so the key in information age is it's customer and value chain centric people within the organization and also your suppliers and customers are looking for real-time insight and companies are looking for integrated processes adaptability that's key for information age how has the SAP product evolved if you look at it in the 1970s mainframes were popular so SAP built a product called SAP R2 R2 stands for release 2 based on mainframe architecture so the goal of SAP R2 is the standard software it was trying to replace existing applications so you had computers were new companies were implementing new computers so SAP R2 came up with a mainframe based ERP to replace existing applications as we talked about ERP stands for enterprise resource planning so it is trying to connect all the functional silos based on a mainframe architecture so they were trying to get you an integrated processes that's what SAP R2 based on mainframe is or was uh, in the late 70s then came the client server architecture SAP calls it release 3 release 3 is based on R3 is based on client server technology it's more focused around internal business processes integrated processes so companies were spending millions of dollars implementing SAP R3 software in the late 1990s to replace existing applications and also as globalization was happening trying to come up with a common business processes across the corporation so SAP R3 or release 3 is based on client server technology that the companies were implementing uh, in the late 1990s SAP um, is getting into the web market as well called SAP NetWeaver but this client server technology is the most popular out of the SAP products another different screen of how their product has evolved the original product screens looked something like this an old purchasing screen a gray, grayish in color it's character based uh, the late 1990s they came up with a product called mysap.com or enjoy SAP with lot more uh, 
graphical user interface and lot more um, office integration uh, lately they have been playing around in the web market same screens uh, enabled via web so that's how the um, the software product has evolved from left to the right a different way of looking at uh, the SAP product evolution the R3 product it had its own releases so people talked about uh, 4.0 3.1 H um, 4.6 B 4.6 C these are releases within the R3 product these are different versions of the software think of it like uh, Microsoft XP Microsoft uh, Windows Vista Microsoft Windows 7 this is how uh, the versions versions are played so the 4.6 C 4.6 B are different versions of the R3 software this is this is pretty much the application core so how has R3 changed now R3 enterprises SAP no longer calls it as R3 it is replaced by something called ECC enterprise central component it is it's a very similar product it's the same product they have just gone with a different name it's no longer called R3 it is called enterprise central component or ECC the base component the base software that SAP sells is now called SAP ECC SAP ECC stands for SAP Enterprise Central Component what are some of the characteristic features of the software the first thing is integration anybody that you talk to about the benefits of an ERP application or SAP would tell you integration is their biggest benefit what is integration all the different modules of SAP share a single database so when you talk about a single database there's only one point of data entry if somebody has entered the data in the organization that data is stored in a single database and is available to be used by other parts of the organization so that's pretty much what is integration the other thing is real-time updates as and when transactions are getting posted in a department all the other departments are getting updated real-time so it's cross application integration as transactions are posted within one module all related functions and modules or automatically updated flexibility what is flexibility when you are implementing SAP it has a variety of different options or what SAP calls it as customizing customizing the different modules of SAP to meet your business needs it also allows unique development tools for your own application development it allows you to customize screens allows you to customize reports based on your need worldwide usage it allows you to do multi currency reporting pretty much on any currency you can do your reports multiple language support it allows you to do business in multiple languages so if you are based out of North America and you're operating globally and you want to be able to log in different languages across the world you can log in in different languages to the same single database a variety of customizing customized reporting for individual countries to meet 
the needs of the government to meet the to meet the needs of the taxation departments it allows you to connect to different third party softwares as well it is enterprise wide it uses the leading practices across a host of different industries so these are some of the this is a very important slide to understand benefits of uh, SAP or an ERP product integration all the modules are connected all departments are connected flexibility it allows you to customize the software for your needs allows you to do uh, worldwide reporting multi currency translation multi language support it allows you to connect to different third party softwares it is used across the enterprise and it also incorporates the leading practices across the businesses that operate in this world this is just a footprint of the IT applications that the client a client was client of mine was trying to implement so what does this this chart tells you this little box here this is ERP 2005 or ECC 60 SAP now calls it enterprise central component 6.0 that's the latest version of the software this is the core component of the software this core component has modules that are listed here 1 through 7 these are some of the modules that belong to ECC 60 when you are buying the SAP software and if you are buying ECC 60 which is the most common software that SAP sells this is the most popular and the most fundamental of an ERP implementation this has finance and controlling sales and distribution materials management production planning human resources quality management plant maintenance these are some of the modules of ECC 60 this is the core SAP product this core SAP product ECC 60 has the seven modules plus a lot more but these are the most popular modules that are out there finance and controlling sales and distribution materials management production planning the top four are the most popular modules that are implemented in an any in any SAP implementations the next layer here SAP has got products called new dimensional products the base product works really well that is the most fundamental basic foundation that you need but there are additional functionalities that SAP offers in this in this next set CRM stands for customer relationship management strategic enterprise management supply chain management supplier relationship management this green layer is an add-on is an add-on to the base product any advanced functionality around supply chain management any advanced functionality that you need around supplier relationship management customer relationship management strategic enterprise management so these modules here FICO finance and controlling sales and distribution SD materials management production planning these four modules pretty much has an add-on you want to think this green layer like an add-on to the base product so any functionality that you don't see in sales and distribution is probably offered in CRM customer relationship management any functionality that you don't see in purchasing in materials management you probably see it in supplier relationship management SRM anything that you don't see in production planning 
is probably offered in supply chain management called SEM. Any advanced functionality that you don't see in finance and controlling like consolidations is probably offered or is offered, it's not probably offered, is offered in strategic enterprise management. So this is the first inner box is the core ECC 60. The next layer is also an SAP product. It's called new dimensional products or add-on products. The next set is also an SAP product. Additional functionality, travel management, global trade services, treasury and risk management. These are some of the add-on products that SAP sells on top of this first two layers. The next set is what is called as we talked about SAP has 1500 partners. So these are some of the partners that sell um, software along with SAP. SAP probably markets this software as well. So SAP has got some product called Vistex um, in the customer segments uh, regarding chargebacks and rebates that operate in a retail environment is offered in a product called Vistex. Triple Point is a commodity trading product that one of the SAP partners makes. So Triple Point is a company by itself that sells a commodity trading software that integrates well with SAP. Vertex, this is a tax package that integrates well with SAP software. Dart is a archiving archiving tool that integrates well with SAP. Nakisa, this is an organizational report, organizational chart reporting software that integrates well with the SAP product. What I want to reiterate on this slide is the innermost is the most fundamental SAP product that you are probably implementing as a company. The next set is an add-on product that you buy on top of this core. The next core is another additional layer of add-on product that SAP sells. The next layer is its, its ecosystem. This is the partner products that SAP sells. These partner products offer some unique functionality that this base product doesn't offer. Let us dive a little, little more in depth on this SAP R3 core components. As we talked about, R3 is now changed into SAP ECC 6.0. 6.0 is the version name. ECC is Enterprise Central Compon Component. These are some of the basic modules within this SAP ECC. Most popular modules financial accounting called as FI controlling called as CO asset accounting called as assets management it's part of FI uh, but it's just unique in itself project systems industry solutions we talked about industry solutions that are offered previously so these are additional enhancements that SAP offers for select industries. Workflow is an email system within the SAP software. Production planning, PP, materials management, MM, purchasing and inventory management is what SAP calls that MM or materials management. Sales and distribution, SD, customer service is part of SD but it's just called out separately because it's kind of unique. Quality management, plant maintenance, HR. So these are some of the modules that are offered within the core SAP software called ECC. So as we talked about, the SAP core product, ECC, right? Let us just remember SAP ECC, the core product has different modules. What's a, what's a module? 
module represents a logical grouping of the business processes and functionality so it's a logical group of how you could think of your business processes fi stands for anything that deals with general ledger accounts payable and accounts receivable finance that's fi co controlling it's just management reporting within an organization sales and distribution and xxx represents pretty much any other module that you could think of in the next few slides we are going to talk in depth about select sap modules what you want to take away from this slide is a module within the sap r3 or ecc r3 is an old name ECC is its latest name enterprise central component It represents a logical grouping of the business processes and functionality the other key message on this slide is because it's an integrated product a change in one application module will result in an automatic update of data in other applicable modules because it's all connected a change in one place a change in sales and distribution can result in an automatic update in either production planning or in finance all application modules have a common architecture and a an user interface so you won't see the difference the advantage of again of a product like sap is the user interface is exactly same across all these modules another way of looking at the core components or ecc purchase orders they are all related in this module called materials management material 1 material 2 that's part of materials management sales and distribution let's take sales and distribution invoicing the customer billing the customer sales orders that's part of sd operations bills of material operations that's all part of production planning controlling expenses expense reporting by department that's co product costing that's controlling financial data general ledger accounts receivable accounts payable that's fi you can in easily now think purchasing has to be tied to accounts payable sales and distribution has to be tied to accounts receivable production planning and product costing are, are related bombs and routings are connected to your product cost how you cost your product the salaries that you pay in hr is tied to finance plant maintenance is tied to production planning what operations what work centers and what machines um, are you doing maintenance on that is directly related to how you plan your products so all this is part of the core component or the core product of sap called ecc a bunch of acronyms out there that's how sap consultants call these modules fi co p p s d m m more in depth of all this core components what is fi fi is nothing more than it tries to meet your external reporting needs general ledger accounting most common module that is implemented across sap fi and co within fi you have gl ap accounts payable accounts receivable asset accounting those are the most four popular sub modules within fi that gets implemented the first three at least controlling cost center accounting any expenses that you post goes is goes against a department in an organization that is all recorded in cost center accounting profit center accounting it's just a reporting dimension um, viewing your manufacturing plans 
or stores in a retail setting. Reports are done off of profit center accounting. Profitability analysis. How much money are you making in a region? How much money are you making with a customer? How much money are you making with a product? All kinds of profitable profitability analysis is done in this PA module. So cost center accounting, profit center accounting, profitability analysis is all part of CO, management decision making, represents the flow of cost and revenue. FI, external reporting, deals with general ledger, an income statement for the company, a balance sheet for the company comes out of GL. Accounts payable, accounts receivable. Accounts payable is tied to purchasing, accounts receivable is tied to sales. Those are sub-modules of FI. Asset accounting, that's its own sub-module within FI. CO, management decision making, involves cost center accounting and profitable analysis. And it also, CO also includes product costing. HR, it's personal management, time management, payroll, training. That's part of the HR sub-module of SAP. More on the core components. Sales and distribution. Sales orders, shipping, transportation, billing, electronic data interchange with your customers. All comes out of SD. Production planning, master planning, capacity planning, materials requirements planning, MRP, production orders, bombs, routings, all are part of PP or production planning. Materials management, it supports two functionalities, two different functionalities. Procurement, which is purchasing, and inventory management, how you store your goods within your organizations, inventory management, and purchasing. Both are called materials management with an SAP. More on select components. I'm not going to talk about customer service and project systems. You can read through it yourself. Warehouse management is a sub-module within inventory management. It allows you to manage bins within your storage location within your within your organization. So in your warehouses and distribution centers, you have warehouse management of SAP implemented. Basic stock management within a warehouse or a distribution center. That's where this WM module comes in. These are selected components of SAP. This is all part of ECC. Every one of them have the same user interface and share the common architecture. Quality management, QM, quality planning, quality inspection is all part of QM. Plant maintenance, equipment maintenance, maintenance orders, uh, they are all part of the core component. The key message that you want to take away from all these slides is same user interface. They are all called modules. There are modules mean logical grouping of the business processes. They are all integrated. One point of entry. If you enter data in one module, most more than likely it is going to apply against all the other modules as well. If you do a transaction in one corner of an organization, most likely it is going to have a real-time update in other modules of SAP. Another way, way to look at how SAP modules are connected and specifically the FI to CO integration as well. If you look at the value chain here at the bottom, any company that deals with procurement, that deals with has procurement, they buy something from a supplier procurement that's materials management produce they are making something that's production planning most or almost all manufacturing companies 
make something that's production planning moving stock you're moving stock from one location to the other or within the location that's moving stock you are selling and billing the product or service that you make so this is a typical value chain of any organization you buy something you make you are moving stock you are selling and billing the product or the service that you make sap calls moving stock and procurement as mm or materials management production is called pp selling and billing is called sales and distribution that's pretty much the supply chain component or the logistics component of sap it's all part of the base base product ecc all of them have a financial impact when you buy something you have a liability you do a good receipt on the product and you have a liability as well when you produce something you have produced finished goods from raw materials has an impact on fi moving stock or scrapping things it has an impact on your finance you're selling and billing the customers invoicing and the customer receivables that's part of fi so fi has general ledger postings accounts payable accounts receivable asset accounting they all can originate within itself or is it result of procurement production moving stock or selling and billing so all of this supply chain transactions impact fi you can implement fi on its own there are journal entries that companies post within an fi module itself that has got nothing to do with this all fi postings that happen on the pnl side pnl profit and loss or income statements the balance sheet components resides within fi the income statement component goes into the controlling module the controlling module is blown out here from fi you have an fi a chart of accounts from fi chart of accounts there is something within sap called cost elements primary cost elements any income statement related stuff whether it is revenue or cost go into the co module using what is called as a primary cost element so every account number in fi is created every pnl account number let me correct pnl account number profit and loss account number or income statement account number revenues and expenses not no balance sheet revenues and expenses are created as cost elements within the co module you are getting the details of the co module here how is fi and co connected overall we talked about fi deals with external reporting co deals with management reporting so co has something called cost elements most basic within co these cost elements are created for every pnl account you create them and that's how the data goes from fi to co and then you have cost center accounting within co where you can run your expenses by cost center budget to actuals by cost centers budget numbers and actual expenses in a given department that typically comes out of cost center accounting product costing what is the cost of a finished good that you produce the material component the overhead component the labor component that goes in producing a finished goods is all part of product costing and that's how the inventories are measured inventories are uh, dollarized based on the product cost that's how the inventory and the balance sheet in fi is updated as well that's why the arrow goes down how do you how do you do 
the cost on inventory that's based on product costing that's how the FI module in balance sheet gets your report profitability analysis what's profitability analysis we talked about prop PA as a sub module within CO pretty much anything that you do underneath goes into PA that's why the box goes from the left to the right on the top any expenses goes into PA when you ship a product when you bill a customer that goes into PA when you procure something and you have a purchase price variance that goes into PA so PA gives you the profitability of a product a profitability of a customer a profitability in a given geography that you operate in it's a reporting module within CO within this base product so this screen pretty much tells you this is the most popular ECC combination that they implement they implement MM, PP, SD along with FI and CO these are the five modules that most implementations have PP, MM, SD, FI and CO in this screen we have basically highlighted what is FI which is external reporting and CO which is management reporting CO has got cost center accounting PA profitability analysis product costing and profit center accounting profit center accounting is nothing more um, than uh, reports by profit centers we'll get into more details of what profit center accounting stands for but what you want to understand is FI and CO any P&L account that you create in FI goes into CO using cost elements and all these supply chain modules have an impact on FI and CO I think we talked enough about the base ECC product now we are going to quickly go through some of the add-on products of SAP SAP has got products called supplier relationship management the MM module does purchasing but anything that you can't get done in MM you want to do some strategic sourcing you want to do uh, record all your RFPs request for uh, purchase uh, you want to do some uh, web web portals for your suppliers that all comes under SRM supply chain management any advanced planning demand planning any collaboration that you want to do with your customers uh, that's all done in SEM supply chain management you want to do some uh, pre-production uh, product life cycle management that's done in PLM anything that there is before pre-production design and development that's the SAP has a product called PLM CRM anything on the sales side that you can't get done in the SD module of SAP that's done in CRM like e-commerce uh, channel management you want to manage what channels that you sell um, you want to analyze more of your partners that's all done in CRM so this screen tells you there are add-on products that SAP sells on top of the base product in the few slides, next few slides, we're quickly going to go through SRM, SCM, CRM, and PLM, what the differences are and what they basically serve. CRM, if you blow the sales on top of SD, you can have a CRM. You can do a campaign management. Um, you can do uh, a pretty much a campaign for a new product that you're launch launching in CRM. You can do some uh, creative promotions for your customer base when you're launching a new product that you can manage in this CRM product that's pretty much CRM uh, at a very very high level all you want to take away is this is an add-on product of SAP um, apart from its base SD product if you want any advanced functionality within your sales organization you are looking at CRM 
SEM production planning is the base module but if you want to do any advanced collaboration with your um, customers on planning this is this is the module that you're implementing it's called SEM supply chain management also SAP calls it APO advanced planning and optimizer advanced planning and optimizer these are some of the sub modules within the APO demand planning supply network planning detailed scheduling all you want to take away is this is an extension of the PP module supply relationship management we talked about the MM base module materials management as a base product within ECC SRM is an extension of MM um, you want to do some web portals for your supplier you're looking at SRM you want to do some RFPs and auctions within your supplier you're looking at SRM you want to manage your catalog supplier catalog you're looking at SRM strategic enterprise management any functionality that is not met within FI and CO on the finance side like business planning and consolidation you're doing some budgeting and you want to do some sophisticated budgeting you can use the business planning software uh, within SAP consolidation you want to do an enterprise wide consolidation that cannot be done within the FICO you have to purchase the add-on component called consolidations uh, within within the SAP product suite you want to do some balanced scorecard on corporate performance management for your C suite you are looking at a CPM product uh, which is an add-on product on top of the base NetWeaver if you've been familiar with SAP, this is the technology component of SAP. So far, what we have seen is all the functional component or the business component of SAP. You looked at a lot of functional modules of SAP, how it's all connected, um, what are the different acronyms. That's what you have seen so far. NetWeaver is the technology part of the SAP software. It has something called Enterprise Portal. It's just a website. If you want to enable any other business functionality um, on a website, you pretty much have this NetWeaver. NetWeaver is part of the base component of SAP. This is just the technology piece of it. Enterprise Portal. Business Warehouse. Any robust reporting that you want to do, they have a warehouse product called Business Warehouse called BW. They interchangeably call it as business intelligence as well. BI slash BW. This sits on top of the base product. It extracts all the data from all your modules that you talked about. PP, MM, SD, FI, and CO. It does reporting. Extracts data from your transactional system and does reporting. That's BW for you. Master data management. If you've got SAP and non-SAP systems and you want to put all master data at one place you're looking at an MDM tool called master data management exchange infrastructure you want to talk to SAP and non SAP systems you are looking at some XML integration you're looking at the XI, XI piece of the software so this is just a technology view of things all the this NetWeaver comes along with the base package you probably as a business consultant won't even know what a NetWeaver is but NetWeaver is just a technology term that SAP has so far we looked at SAP's products and solutions different modules different add-on products that SAP sells now we are going to look at data and transactions within SAP what, what is a transaction uh, give some examples of different data data that SAP holds so SAP data and transactions is what we're going to look at so SAP has got something called organizational data this is probably the first thing when you're implementing SAP your consultants are going to talk about organizational data every module within SAP has got some organizational data this acts as the foundation for your implementation 
for all your transactions to happen with an SAP. This is the foundation. Every module has got organizational element. FI and CUA has got the bulk of the organizational elements called company code. You want to do balance sheets and PL? You want an org unit, and that org unit is called company code with an SAP. You want to have manufacturing sites or retail locations, SAP calls them as plants. Okay, that's an org element. You want to have a central purchasing organization, that's an org element. So, organizational data, what you want to take from this slide is every module with an SAP PP, MM, SD, FI and CO these core modules of SAP or the base modules of SAP all have organizational structure or organizational data or organizational element that you will be configuring in the system these are initial setup one time setup that you do when you implement SAP this is the foundation that mu that must exist before any business processes can be modeled or executed. This is the key message here. Foundation which must exist with an SAP before any of these modules can be modeled or executed. It also defines the linkages between all these different things. So if you have plans and all of them are connected to one legal entity called company code you are pretty much connecting them when you are defining a plan it is you are defining plant X and you also link the plan to an FI org element called company code that pretty much establishes the link within your organization what is configuration data once you define the organization that's the first part you define the organization, set the organization up. How is your company set up? You do that first. Then the consultants are going to do configuration. What is configuration? There are a bunch of tables behind the scenes within what SAP calls it as customizing. Customizing is nothing more than customizing and configuration or used interchangeably. Configuration, customizing, same thing. They are table-driven table settings within SAP. You are basically setting what are the different sales order types that you are going to use. So in SD module, the first thing you set up is an organizational structure called sales organization. In configuration, you go and say what are the different sales order types that you are going to use. So configuration data is nothing more than table-driven settings this is the second thing after the organizational structure is defined the consultants are going to talk about sales order types in SD as an example product costing has got something called activity types that's within the CO module so these are one time setups they are table driven settings this needs to be done before any transactions can be posted so the first thing that we learnt is organizational structure these are the foundation. The next thing is configuration data. These are table driven settings, one time setup that your consultants have done to get your system up and running. Configuration and customizing with an SAP are one and the same. This is to model how your organization is going to do, how many different kinds of sales orders you're going to have. That is defined in customization. Master data these are static data that represent things so if you think about it GL account number that's static data how many different accounts do you have those are static data it doesn't it's not an event event is a transaction data which we will get there this is a central repository so we talked about integrated software right we said if you do it at one place most likely it's going to be used at other other modules of SAP and you don't need to repeat them so this is a central repository so product master bills of material customer master vendor master these are all master data with an SAP GL accounts 
these are master data so the first thing is arc arc structure we talked about arc structures as a foundation the next is configuration or customizing configuring your systems sales or a type is a good example to remember master data is static data that is that gets created by the company so this is ongoing master data is an ongoing thing customizing is a one time setup org structure is a one time setup whereas master data is an ongoing thing static data that represent things it's a central repository examples are vendor master customer master product master bills of material that's master data transactional data that's the fourth thing it's a dynamic data it's typically changing created many times in a given day production orders sales orders journal entries um, cost center allocations you are moving dollars from one cost center to the other all this you are creating invoices you are creating goods receipt you are creating purchase orders sales orders you are creating deliveries you are creating invoices all of them are transactional data it records a business activity or an event a transactional data uses all the it uses organizational data it uses master data it uses configuration to record an event transactional data and master data are done by end users of the system the business users of the systems post transactional data create master data they don't do customization or configuration they don't define the different sales or types or probably your consultants and your uh, sap team is building all the configuration and the org structure for you the transactional data on the master data is done by the end users so this is a good slide it uses this is the sap application remember we talked about the different modules inputs or master data your configuration company code configuration like sales order types you use master data like vendor master customer master material master in all these modules and you get an sap document on the right so relevant data is used by sap transactions when creating transactional documents it knows when you are creating a sales order it needs to use a customer master it needs to use a sales organization it doesn't ask you to retype them again each transaction will create a document what is a document it's a unique id to record your transaction every transaction that you do can be tracked it also records user id who is entering it it also records the time of creation what time it was created it also records any supporting information that you can provide supporting information time of creation user ids or all recorded with this unique id and unique every transaction document has a unique id all transactions most of them are virtual transactions they are all in a database they are not paper documents but if you want to attach paper documents like printing an invoice printing a purchase orders you can do that as well or you can even electronically transmit to your Uh, partners customers and suppliers all of those options are available so transaction documents have unique id they also record user ids who did the transaction it also records the time of creation and any supporting information documents are all virtual they are all stored in the database you can also create paper documents if needed most sap documents have this thing called header and item information but more to come all you want to know is transactional documents are created based on org data and master data and configuration another example of how transactions work some end user here is trying to perform a sales order he or she is trying to create a sales order the sales order creation will access the master data they are typing in the customer id they are saying 
use this customer ID to create the sales order. SAP automatically goes behind the scenes to look at the credit limits. This is configuration credit limits for the customers and saying, okay, yep, this guy's have got customers or has got credit. Um, so the sales order gets created. A document is generated. A unique ID is created. It will record its time of creation. It will also record the user ID that created the sales order. And that sales order will be used for reporting and analysis. So this is how a typical SAP transaction works. An end user is entering a transaction. An end user also enters a master data if needed. But when you enter a transaction, it goes and accesses master data records like customer master. It also goes behind the scenes to access all the data tables. Then it creates a sales order for you. Reporting with an SAP. There are multiple ways to report with an SAP. You have a search help. You can search pretty much anything in SAP. Any data that is stored in SAP, multiple ways to search them. Multiple ways. You have what is called as a transaction list. You have like a bunch of transaction codes. You pretty much type them, it will give you a report. There are a lot of queries that you can write with an SAP. There are something called ABAP. ABAP is nothing more than the technical language behind the SAP software. This technical language you can write any number of reports you want. That's an ABAP report. Also SAP has got this data warehouse called BW. It extracts all the SAP raw data and you have slicing and dicing that you can do on this BW tool. So what you want to take away from this slide is variety of options to do search with an SAP, variety of reports can be built, a variety of standard transaction codes will be provided to you by module to access information and it also has a BW tool called Business Warehouse where you can do slicing and dicing of the data. It extracts all the transactional data and you can do summary level reporting and slicing and dicing. That's all you want to take away from this slide. So far we saw products and data and transactions with an SAP. Now we are going to quickly talk about an SAP implementation, different phases of SAP implementations different phases of SAP implementation is what we are going to talk about and what is an SAP implementation. So what is an SAP implementation? Two phases for an SAP implementation. First is called the setup phase. The setup phase of the SAP system is pretty much your consultants working with your business users and your IT team to say what is your future business process is going to look like how is it going to be set up the configuration that we talked about the customizing that we talked about in previous slides the organizational data that we talked about they're going to do the setup phase that gets you going then what is called as a live phase live phase is where the business users uses the SAP applications to support their daily operations and activities daily transactions are entered after the live phase, the setup phase and the live phase, that's what an SAP implementation is. The setup phase is basically comparing your future state business processes and its requirements. What is offered in SAP? What do you really need? Trying to do a fit and gap analysis. This is what SAP offers. This is what your needs are from a futuristic standpoint, not your current state. Your future state business processes. You also analyze your current state and look at where, where, where does your current state lie, what are some of the benefits of your current state, what are some of the pain points that you have in the current state and how the SAP software can help you. That's pretty much what uh, before the live phase, the setup phase um, of an SAP implementation. SAP is not successful without, without the organizational support, without extensive implementation and support effort you can't have success in an SAP implementation so two phases of SAP implementation setup 
and live. Live is after your system goes live. Your business users are entering transactions. Setup is the pre-go live phase of the project. So, how is the SAP system set up? So, first you do configuration. The consultants will tell you something called implementation guide or IMG. That's your predefined options. Configuration changes the way system. Configuration changes the way the system behaves without requiring any coding. There is no coding involved. There is no programming involved. The consultants, the business consultants that you hire, is going to help you do the configuration so that your future business processes are, are supported. So setting up your legal entities setting up your order types. There is no coding involved. The consultants are doing the configuration so that the standard system supports it. The standard system has a variety of options. Setting up the system, the setting up the options for your company. That's configuration. Setting up the options for your company without any coding. That's configuration. Enhancement or customization. There is a technical team called ABAP team. That's that's the programming language of this SAP software. It stands for Advanced Business Application Programming Language, ABAP. If standard SAP software doesn't support it using configuration, you are pretty much writing enhancements. You are pretty much building programs using ABAP to make the system work for you. So ABAP and configuration is set up. ABAP plus configuration is set up. So ABAP example would be a data conversion program. You want to load your account balances. So there is a data conversion program that you write and load. So that data conversion program is ABAP. A standard SAP report doesn't meet your needs. You are adding, you are taking an existing report and adding a couple of fields that's an ABAP development so that's ABAP so configuration and programming ABAP programming is pretty much an SAP implementation two things configuration and custom development that's pretty much SAP setup why is it expensive An SAP implementation involves matching functionality to business requirements, which means you are changing the business processes. Some aspects of your business needs to change to meet the standard SAP solution. So you have to change some of the business processes that you do. Um, yours may not be the best practice. SAP comes up with the best practice or a standard SAP solution. So you may have to change your business processes that involves change management there is dollars involved configuring the system to, to, to choose the options that SAP provides any number of options to match SAP functionality with your business needs that's configuration that's costing you dollars you're paying the consultants then you are developing new programs and new screens if your current if configuration doesn't solve your problem, you are enhancing SAP. You are enhancing SAP with custom programs using ABAP. That's expensive. So the dollars are more because you are trying to change some aspects of your business to meet with the SAP standard processes. You are configuring the system, which means changing your settings, and then anything that is not met using configuration you are enhancing the system using custom development called ABAP so that's that's dollars some of the methodologies that these companies use all SAP projects have these phases in very similar terminologies blueprinting project prep setting up your project teams that's project definition that's project prep business blueprinting defining your future state processes trying to say okay how how is how is my company going to operate in future in the SAP world that's blueprinting realization 
you are building the system you are doing the configuration you are doing all the abap development you are doing the testing that's realization so realization involves configuration custom development and testing you are also building some security roles you are building some authorization who can access what that is authorization who can access what is authorization or security final prep you are doing some end user training and documentation end user training how, how are the end users getting trained what kind of documentation that you are building that's final preparation then you are going live and then you have a support phase most sap projects this is a standard sap terminology it's a five phase methodology project prep blueprinting realization final prep go live and support prep building your project team blueprinting defining your future state processes realization configuration custom development and testing final prep end user training and documentation and data transfer go live and support you go live with sap and you're supporting your end users that's pretty much um uh, different phases of the project any questions on any of this who is sap what are the different products what's a transaction what's an sap implementation go back and listen to this video thank you